So that's it. Um, I'm here to present this project I've worked on the last year or so in my spare time. Um, so at sometimes it's all projects. At sometimes I'm more more involved into it and doing things all the time, and then sometimes I stop. And now there are a couple months I, I don't touch it at all. But uh, I think it's, it's a, a fun thing to to mess around with. Um, so we've had uh, this culture on the internet of ASCII art, and we also have, on the other hand, an active group of people creating a lot of characters, a lot of things to use with Unicode that would allow for a lot of nice art, ASCII art, and we don't have a way to, to actually use it. We don't have a, a, a nice tool that will let you use all the nice Unicode funny characters with ASCII art, even older Unicode characters. Like we have, uh, we have had character blocks that are Unicode characters that are subdivided into blocks that can could be used as pixels, like since forever. And there is no tool that would allow you to use these subpixels to draw unless you type them by hand. So these these characters subdivided into four parts that you can use to draw. Um, as far as I know, I've I've met them first time in, in uh, Sinclair computers back in the eighties. And back then, you could actually draw because you were very limited. So you'd actually type that into the source code of the program and have your drawings composed there. Uh, this project brings back a little bit of this. My idea is to, to allow anyone to write code to draw with ASCII art as if you were drawing on an image. Um, so I'm switching now for, to the to share my screen, uh, just a second. It's here. So the screen sharing here. Okay. Uh, there it is. Now here, here, and I'm working at Clint this terminal. Um, let me check on the IRC if someone has even sent. So one thing you have, I, think, I guess, you have to type on the, the IRC LGM Workshop channel. I'll be watching it from time to time, but I may forget. So, Timothy, you, you may warn me if there is something popping up there I didn't read. Okay. Um, so, here on, I'm on a Unix terminal. Um, the project is called Primidia. Maybe I should. Uh, okay, it's on IRC. Oh, sorry, on GitHub. Uh, it's hosted as a Python project. Uh, I had last made a release. So could install it easily over a year ago. I made a new release yesterday night. And now it should be good to go with all, all, all bells and whistles. So for anyone following us, I can, um, I will start with an empty Unix directory. So let's see here. Uh, um, Sorry. Okay. Ah, here. Yes. Okay. Ah, it, it, it's a show. <laughs> I, I was hoping it wouldn't show. <laughs> okay. So I'm starting with a, a new new directory just because I'm starting a new Python project. So if you, if you are a hard time uh, Python coder, you know how to do this. Otherwise, you can install it for you as a user. Just type in a single command. Okay. So I, I'm creating a new Python virtual env. So I can have a separate project where I can use the, 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 the Terminator project. Otherwise, I'll show you the command to install it directly uh, user-wide. So I'm creating a, a new uh, virtual env, Python. I have to put Python 3 here. So this creates a, a local installation of Python this directory, and I activate it using this command. Okay. And now, um, once it's installed, it's, it's activated. I can type pip install media just like this. Four seconds. So it's a, a pure Python file. Uh, the only dependency it has is uh, this click library for command line things. 
and it comes up with a few examples of what it can do. But before going to the examples, I'll, I'll show its usage. So um, the idea of this project is, is to allow people who want to draw just to sit down and and, and make the drawing as easy as as possible without having to think about, without having to do to deal around, around documentation. And documentation is a major fault of it, actually. So the more advanced the aspects I'll be teaching on this workshop uh, aren't, aren't easy to find around unless you, you, you check the code yourself. But this single first part, so if I start Python here, I'm starting up Python 3.7 on these virtual ends. And here I can import the project just like this. So it's correctly installed. Um, and the easiest way to use it is that I have made a print function that's analog to Python's all print. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if this font size is good on this on this streaming. Maybe I can. So the resolution is low. So just put it a little higher. Because we're focusing focusing on this. Okay. Okay. Um, so hello, IGM. This is analogous to Python print, except that uh, besides normal parameters for print, you can also put things like a color, or oh, uh, blue, and background. Oh, it's print. It, however, doesn't doesn't preoccupate about set resetting the terminal. So the idea, uh, the idea is that, okay, I just want to use all these, um, not only Unicode power for ASCII art, but also the, the terminal for coding has had a lot of features and we don't have an easy way to access it. If you want to print a color, it, it's um, common for you to check at by the, the, the source code of programs, not only Python, but others, where the people have to type in the, the, the escape sequences for changing color by hand if they want to print some text in red or something. Okay. Um, so this is the, the low level or high, a very high level user, the, 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 the feature. You can just print it. Um, I think you have here some Terminidia. So we'll just reset the background. Uh, I have some default value somewhere. So, values, yes. Ah, so the autocomplete won't work. Should be reactory. So my, my idea is to expose. So I Here. FG, no, it is so this should come back at least for the default background here. So reset the terminal. Um, let's check ARC, I guess. No one. Yeah. Ah, so people suggested IPython. Actually, IPython is how I use it. I just uh, wanted to give the less information possible for people to start with. So, of course, this Python thing, um, this is the traditional Python uh, interpreter. And IPython had the advantage of it uh, that it resets the, the screen settings after each, each thing printed. So let's install IPython as well. Install. So this is how I actually use it. There it is. Ba, ba, ba. So this is a fresh, fresh environment. I just did pip install Terminidian, pip install IPython. Here you go. Oh, it, yeah. um, and actually, I use it does this uh, import Terminidia. There's a lot of functions and colors and, and stuff are, are already present in the, the, the main module. I just did this in the way of uh, Milky and Pandas, so we can have access to all the good things. 
Oh, uh, besides changing color, we can set up some effect as well. Effects are here, tn dot effects. And on autocomplete, it'll show you a lot of, of. Um, so these effects, blink for example, is for having blinking text. And since we are on IPython, it resets the, the stream back. Uh, these terminal effects are not easy to, to, to use, although they've been present in Unix terminals like uh, for, for 30 years maybe now. And you just couldn't sit down and write a short script that would make use of them unless you'd research all over the internet on how to turn this on and have to print complicated sequences to, to turn this on, turn this off. So one of the purposes of Terminator the library is to make this easy. Okay, you can use this. Um, there are other effects there that are not as known and are normally around in all terminals. Some of them uh, double the width of the characters so they don't show well in the print thing. But I guess um, the circled thing. So for example, Or maybe it's encircled. Here. Oh, uh, and I actually combine the two things. I have the activate terminal effect, and some of the effects instead do a translation of the characters to use Unicode equivalents. So you can, so this is one thing you have had for years um, Unicode characters for all characters that have a circle around them. But unless you are copy and pasting these from, from like a character table, you didn't have an easy way to use them. So one of the ideas, the ideas of Terminidia is to, to make it easy. Problem of this, using these like this, is that these characters, the Hilo LGM, they have a double width, if, and the terminal program I'm using can't cope with that. So how do we solve this kind of thing? Um, so Terminidia has another level of usage where you instantiate a screen object. The screen object then allow you to paint on a text area like a canvas, and you can update the terminal with it if you want. That is more interesting for, for more sophisticated stuff. Okay, just uh, let me check. Yeah, we can, we can show the screen right now. So I instantiate the screen like this. Falls to the terminal size. And if I type in c.update, it just erases the screen. Oh, um, it does feature a draw uh, namespace here where we have a drawing IP, API. You can, you can just type things like, okay, draw me a line. Uh, then you put two coordinates, x first, y second. So drawing a line is starting on column five, line five, and go to uh, column 30, same line, and you pass it colors and stuff. And uh, But if you do this, it will draw the line there uh, and move the cursor just behind, just below it. It, it, it updates leave. Okay. And if I want to just see things uh, drawn up the upper part of the screen, the best thing to do is to call an update whenever I type a comment. Uh, this thing is, is kept on a memory area and, and, and uh, an image that's not, not, not unlike a layer of an image when we are using a traditional painting software. And I can control the colors and stuff by doing the context. So I don't have to pass the colors every time. So if I do here, for example, effect. Blink doesn't work like that. I draw a second line on the following row. Okay. 
Ah, uh, it. Um, okay, so this is a side effect. As I told you, I have a couple months using here without using the, the thing. It shouldn't have made the first line to blink. Uh, okay, I have to think what. Why did it affect, affect the red line as well? Okay. And let's set up clear. So we have a couple things here. The drawing API does feature a few functions. And I plan to enrich it in the future. But you can actually do busier lines, lines, uh, ellipses. You have the context thing so you can, can change uh, the colors in there. And you have busy lines, rectangle, and ellipses. Okay. And the fun thing starts when we draw with uh, the block characters I told, I've told earlier. So before we do that, uh, when we install Terminedia, there are a couple example programs I opted to make them uh, make available on the, on the screen itself. Sorry, on the shell itself. In here, Python terminal on um, okay, check IRC. Yeah, so I all wrote down that um, uh, that it uh, also works with normal Python. IPython is normal Python. It just enriches the shell. But yes, and uh, just by installing Python itself, you are ready to go. And can. So you should type the media here in the terminal itself. You have an hit out complete. You have these these programs. Most of them are just uh, noisy things I, I wrote uh, quickly just to check, to check some feature I've written. So lines, um, but some of them are actually useful. And some of them I made for, for having uh, whoa, this, this can look vintage, it can look fancy effect rather than being right away useful, but can they can be more useful than that. But then we need a text by itself, won't uh, erase the screen, it will, it will do its thing without erasing the screen. What it does is using um, an 8-bit font that is embedded into the project to draw larger side text using the drawing characters. So just like this. What happened here, it, it didn't use, uh, if you check the text height of one letter, each, each pixel on the Terminedia text there, it uses half height. Because uh, if you check Terminedia text, there's a couple of options here. Uh, and I can I can use different size of text so I can do Terminedia text the color to red size to eight on right LGM ah. so there it is um, a full character block each one using eight by eight space. And if I want to clear the screen, I just pass the switch. You can do this. So this is uh, what you get normally when trying to do this sort of thing. Okay, so, so each pixel is a full character. And okay, there are other ways to do that. What the media has of new is that it can do the half size of that. So here, each pixel is one quarter character in size. And you can do that uh, on the drawing API. It's a simple simple thing to do. So other examples are the media image. It uh, loads an, an image and displays it on the terminal, just like that. OK, by default, when I installed the package without specifying an image, it has a moon photograph. I'll just uh, change the size of the terminal because I'm not sure what happens when it doesn't fit in. There it is. So uh, so this is another thing we usually don't know. 
we use it to think of these terminals as as having just eight colors. And actually, for a long time now, Linux virtual terminals can have any color you want. You can set uh, any of the, the 24-bit addressed colors for any character on the terminal. And you can translate a factor there. So uh, maybe this starts getting interesting when you when you not only can output the image by using terminating the image, but you can also output this this image to a text file. And terminating the image can do that. Um, okay, so I should I should have made available some some small size images around here. This this small image. It's uh, saved in the ASCII image type, that PBM file. Uh, and Terminija can read it on its own. It can decode the file on its own. If I want to display uh, JPG images or PNG images, I also need to install Python uh, image library. So I have to do pip install. Okay. Now I can get any image on the internet. Uh, Terminija, I have in the project some some butterfly images. I'll use one of that because it's ready here. I just copy it here. CP so it should be at home. So yeah. Some of those butterfly come here. So let's check if it's a nice size. This is the original image. It's scaled down, but the you can scale it down on its own, on itself. Um, and I can do the Minija image butterfly DPG. Here's the, the butterfly. What I can do this thing. We need uh, H help. I can designate an output file on a backend thing. So I can do this. Then we need uh, image. So it ran, and now I have a 40 kilobyte butter.txt, which embeds the the control sequences for changing colors of text in the text file. And I have a text file that when displayed inside Unix, a single command like this, just in the major terminal. So this is one, one way that Unix hackers can can play around with this thing. You can just create the image you want and have it displayed like this. Okay. Uh, the, the image drawing thing can't directly use the higher resolution, resolution blocks yet. It can be coded, yes, by, by using the library for whoever programs in Python. But if you don't code at all, you can just install Terminija with pip install, like I did in the beginning of the, the tutorial. And you can convert your image to ASCII text that can be uh, shown in the terminal. Ah. So if you see it with less, which you won't uh, render the, the control characters directly, it actually will show you, the, the, you can see the contents of the file. So here are the, the escape sequences that make the color changing, and the only character is actually a blocky character. That's the one you can see here. Time to check text input. Yeah. So about the low res, low res actually make it uh, so it, you can. And actually, one thing. That Sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, but not about the streaming, okay. So one thing is that uh, these terminals nowadays, they can get so, uh, you can actually get uh, like um, 200 columns of text like here, 
And with your double it with the, with the high res thing, you can have 400 pixels across, which is more than you would have a resolution in 8 bit computers, where some of us started drawing and doing things. Like oh, my first computer had 256 pixels wide on the screen. So, yes, the idea is that you, ha um, you should be able to write small games uh, with an H ish feeling and have playing there and straight from the terminal. And actually, one of the first things I did when I started writing this thing was write such a game. So one of the other demonstrations we have here is Terminity Snake. So, sorry, let me. So you have a full snake game here using the Unicode things you have to nowadays to draw an Apple character there. You can eat it and have points. This was written over a year ago when with the first capabilities of the, the library. And one of the things I've been postponing is to write a full Space Invaders game from here. I could even start it now. <laughs> Um, this comes, to, comes with it. Ah, what I didn't say is that uh, if you're not a regular Python user, you have Python on your Unix machine, you can install it without the virtual anything by, by writing this command. pip install user terminedia. Sorry, it's pip3. So if you are in an Ubuntu or Fedora or the Linux distro and are not a Python person, you can just do this in the terminal and just use it right away. Um, so let's go back to the programming part. Let me show some, some of the capabilities of the thing. And then we could start doing something. Because, um, most of the time I spent hacking on this. I spent hacking on, on new features, but I didn't spend any time using these features to actually make drawings. So one of my, my objectives with this workshop is having a few of you engaged in, in trying to use this thing for real. And then you can start me asking me for features that are, people will be using. I have a lot of features that, but no users. <laughs> so one other, one other demonstration that's worth seeing is that uh, um, so we mentioned that you have the blink effect and other effects that uh, you can turn on just to you can ju just use them along with the print statement or you can use on the screen but then one of the demos is the mini effects so here, here we have some some something so we have a uh, boat uh, so the first few effects are embedded into the terminal up to the faint thing, the conceal thing as well. And some others are documented, but that ha didn't get any terminal program that would actually use them, like the double underline or framed thing. None of them would work. From encircled and below, uh, but were overlined, but uh, it's not in order. Overlining, I think it's a uh, terminal effect. But some of the other effects there, negative squared, uh, parenthesized, are actually translations of the characters into Unicode characters. And you can have uh, all of these easily in, inside the Terminidia, a Python script using Terminidia, just by passing the effects um, parameter to the print. The upside down, I sourced across the internet a lot of hacks that would translate, uh, so it's not a one-to-one -one thing. You don't have actually upside down Unicode characters for some of the characters you have to hack around. So like the, this uh, D of hello world is probably just a P. There is a translation table inside Terminidia uh, that I sourced how I could from the internet crossing up some, some of the best translation tables for that. On the other hand, and some of these, I actually check it later, are not guaranteed to work on any terminal or any combination. The, the super bold effect, which looks super nice here, maybe can get you a few bad surprises. It's meant, uh, it actually does use some Unicode characters meant for uh, location presentation or something. And then some letter pairs all of a sudden 
can translate themselves into the, the flag of a country. Like if you use US, you could have, instead of the letters U and S, uh, an, US, an US flag <laughs> emoji. So it's not guaranteed to work. Other ones uh, do not look nice here because uh, you have that thing that uh, the terminal program doesn't know how to deal with the, the character we did. But then, um, I'm going back into the Python environment. Here. And uh, we need a screen. When you use uh, the print inside the screen, it just try to guess, uh, actually, it uses the, it consults the, the character table to check if the, if the character is wide and it tries to put it there uh, using two character cells. So this should work better. Let's see. So row zero, line five. And effects, TM effects, and And we append some update here. Oh, it's still, it's still not working. And your millage may vary with the terminal programming. I'm using, I'm using here KDE terminal. Uh, with GNOME terminal, we have. Uh, some some difference. For example, the the Apple Unicode thing you had for the snake, it's an actually full color emoji on, on the GNOME terminal. And uh, this variation you get here is because of the font. So we have, for some reason, and on my setup, we have some font that has the two encircled two in one font and the, the encircled zero in another font that uses another size. And um, so anyway, now uh, I've demonstrated the demos. We had an idea. I shown I've shown the drawing API API and its basics when you can draw a full character block, but you can also draw with uh, the one quarter block, which is an interesting thing to do. So if I do here, that thing is still here, okay. You, you, I'm mean, writing over the screen, but it's kept in the frame there. If I want to get rid of these, I better clear it. And then if I draw an ellipsis like this, but it doesn't look nice at all, but uh, just for us to compare it. So up to column 30, row 15, like this. And then, otherwise you can move the cursor for the half of the ellipse. Okay. Now, why did I do this? Because you have other namespaces here that allow you to draw in the higher resolutions, let's say. There's actually a very interesting Python project as well. Because uh, unlike what we have to do when we, we were working professionally, when all you do with coding is processing commercial data, and client names and, and values and, and things, and everything you get of fun for programming is already done by the people who wrote the frameworks you are using. Uh, here I could actually write everything uh, from, from start. So I, I came up with this namespace that reuse code. So a nice surprise for me when coding this is that when I, I made, after I made the draw API and made the high resolution mode work, I could adapt the drawing API to use the high resolution with like less than 30 lines of code. So inside the high, you have also a draw and you draw in high resolution. So, but here I start on column 60 and we'll come up with uh, column 120. Here you have the same ellipse drawn with one quarter character blocks. 
Um, okay, I made this. So I, I, I went down research and stuff, and I found out there are actually defined some Unicode Braille characters that allow you to have a four, four row by two columns pixel arrangement inside each block of each character block. And it actually, so I actually implemented that. But the problem is that um, you have to find the right font to display the Braille characters as pixels. Otherwise, they don't look nice at all. And uh, they don't look nice here if you do it. But it, just to show it working, I have also the, the, the brighter resolution here. So it has the same number of, of columns as the high resolution, but have the twice the twice the vertical density here. This. So there it is. So the, the particular character set I'm using for Braille here does show the empty dots for Braille, which is not nice. But uh, and also they do have a vertical spacing from one character to the next. So they actually don't plot well. But uh, you can have an idea of what you can get if you have the right setup for this. And there is also an intermediate resolution that gives you um, square square aspect ratio, because all of these have a, a tall aspect ratio. I mean, the pixels are twice as tall as they are wide. OK. Um, then, so the text API. This is one thing that should get some improvements. But um, that is that terminated text demo there. And I made it available in Python just like this. You do a C, you have a screen. You have a text namespace here. Then when doing text, I thought about, OK, but then I should write, instead of having a namespace like this, it's like this. You select the size here. So text 4 is the text using fonts that are four characters high using uh, an 8 by 8 resolution for each character. And then I have the at function here. Coordinates here on a text here. And any color or anything I want here. Is I don't put the update thing, uh, it works as well. It moves my cursor up there. Okay. Um, so you can work from Python and compose your image inside your screen. And then you can render it to a text a file like uh, the one we had seen before. And it is as simple as so this thing is new. You have this screen object here. Uh, the, the representation of it have some data on on the context and other things. But inside it, you have a data thing. This data thing is is a um, shape object. Shape object is the name I chose to to handle images. Actually, the ASCII art images are shape objects, and you can just uh, it has a render method. And uh, it's as simple as passing a file name for it. So, oh no, <laughs> I don't think I, I think I broke it on the last couple of months. I had not used it, but should you work like this one? I tested yesterday. So okay. The text, uh, text backend is failing, but I have a, it also render ASCII R2 HTML. So I can now do this.
it doesn't complain the it send any text. Or it might complain actually. So it does complain because it's text. Just uh, rename it. So oh, stupid Chrome. So there it is. Okay, we didn't fill the background, so it uh, but the, the each character block have uh, the, the shown part that is yellow then, and then the background is black, and you have to set and fill fill the, the background actually with a black thing if you want the block text. But this works this way: you just uh, can compose your art in the Python terminal by using a lot of comments, and then just calling render. It will create you a, a text file or an HTML file ready to display your ASCII art. And of course, um, I didn't show one other thing. Of course, uh, cats. You close the door, they want to come inside. Maybe you have to stop and open the door. <laughs> so, um, here, I'm back to the very same uh, screen. Right up. I think this and um, ah, this thing. So I can also show the context and I set up uh, the color, background color, but you can also change the character you use it to draw. So instead of full block, okay, you can just put whatever you want there. And then if you write. So if I do SC text eight, use asterisks because I set that on the context. Of the high resolution, we will always have to use the same same characters, but you can change it uh, to whatever character you want. And then I have an API to, to allow you for allowing you to draw and actually use these shapes of image more or less like you, you, we use layers on a painting program. But I don't know if you are interested in seeing that. Maybe maybe a few more demos. I have, need some feedback to know where we go from here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't have a single cat. I have a single cat that's trying to come inside the room. I'll actually. No, she just stay there. <laughs> okay, um, I'll show you some of the other demos. Or maybe we do some some code. Because uh, I think coding, we'd, we'd get close to one of the demos, that is this one. So uh, besides playing things, if I want to do games, like I did with the snake game, one thing that's hard to do in the terminal as well, is to get keyboard input because uh, by default you have to by default you have to wait for the person to to type a whole phrase and press enter so your program can can process that and when some of us started back then in the 8-bit computers it was much easier than that you have a function called basic that to just tell you if, if a key was pressed at that, that very moment or not uh, what I made is to recreate that function so you can use it in Python. So, um, um, I have to, to turn on special mode for it to work. But anyway, as we had the, the, the demo, we can do this media shape. So, this is a small demo that uh, doesn't raise the screen for a full effect. But a small ship, I can move around if there are keys. Nice thing is what I have to type to draw this, this small ship around is that I actually uh, was worried about easy ways to define the shapes you want to use as ASCII art inside your code. So if we if you see the code for this terminated shape code uh, thing, I dig into some code here. So these are the example files, and you have the image here. 
So the ship, oh no, the image is the one that deters the moon. It's shape. Yeah. So that ship is actually written like this. And I have another ship that's written like this. Uh, I put the dots here so that the program editor won't uh, strip, strip down the space here. I need the space for, to define the, the ship. And I have this more sophisticated ship here that uses more than one character type. And I have a color map. So I can use this second shape with this color map. And we have, unless I made uh, some, some shapes here. I made everything available by common line. Just use shape two. I want to create a clear screen, just see. I have the big shape, big ship on high. It does the, the same shape in high resolution. Um, have it. And we've got See, you can walk around with your ship. This time with adult artifacts, don't ask me why not, we're not clearing the screen, we don't have the artifacts. Unfortunately, I can't have uh, anything in the code to interact with what was already on the screen. You can't read what is on the screen back to your code because it would be, be some nice thing to do. Uh, but I can, of course, uh, write new things while it's running, and then it knows about what's there. But I can't make it the ship shoot and score points because it hit an E letter from here, for example. Okay. So these, um, okay. So next thing, maybe, is that uh, the, the API, as I said, is getting quite fancy. And I, I built up some transformers things that allow you to actually code anything you want when displaying, displaying an image there. Uh, as, as we are talking about code, that that's, that means, uh, for example, you can you can say that um, on on even rows the character is an asterisk, on on an odd rows the character is. An, Another thing you can do. No, I exited the And you have um, gradients. So you can have gradients in text. I think that the, one of the easiest ways to, to, to show gradients working is to have uh, some text back. Uh, but now, the other time, I just uh, drew the text directly on screen. For these uh, gradients and effects to work, transforming effects to work, I actually have to create separate in-memory images for them. Then I apply separately transformers for these these uh, separate images when they are being bleed. So I actually have, uh, like I said before, the, the the same thing you have in a drawing program when you have layers for an image. You have here, you have, um, or as I was thinking in a gaming context, um, I have for the screen or any image as a TB, it can have a sprite thing, and these sprites can contain other images that are transformed as they, they are set. So let's let's take a look at this. Uh, so I create a screen. So, uh, but yeah, so how long is this workshop? We have one hour or one hour and a half. Much more. I have some time. Okay. So if it's up to two hours, so um, I, I want some feedback of what we can do. Because if we have a full hour now, <laughs> We can even code some, some really nice thing here, a nice program using the difference from 
for a start. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'll show this, because um, this is harder to get by the documentation. And then uh, this video can, can act as a documentation as well. So I've shown I have the data namespace, which is a shape, and it has some, some functions and something there. But it has some sprite sync, sprite container. And in two sprite containers, I add other shapes. And to create a new shape, I do this TN of shape. This is a factory function. This is smart. If I pass it a file name, it will try to read the file name as an image. And if I pass it a size, it will create a, a layer of this size. So I want something with 80 columns, 10 rows. This right here. And I can draw text there. So I can just, uh, so how do I draw text there? It also features a draw namespace. So, and I can do the, the, the same things I did there. So I can fill it. Basically, I have a rectangle. And I can stamp it on the screen. So this SSC object is my screen. It's high is shape. Draw it the position I want. So like 10, 10, and what I want to be there. Here we have, uh, we have super, super low resolution. So the 80 rows maybe is hitting the end of the screen. I'll do it a smaller one. See, so it will fit on this terminal size. Here it is. But if I stamp it this, it actually copied the, the image data to the, the screen data, and it just stamp it there, it's uh, overwrote whatever was there. If I don't want to overwrite things, I, I do the sprite thing. So I do it like this. Screen, that is it's add so my shape thing. And I can say it's active. And I can say it starts at position uh, first row. Sorry, four column first row. This. Sorry. Ah, okay, but this shape is now empty. So I can do. It does have a draw, it does actually have a text. Text here. The same drawing API you have for the, the screen, you have for any sub image you create. There it is. And the difference now, I can relocate this. So, so even if I, if I do draw something on the screen, I can relocate that. And that data is hold separated like, like a layer on a, an image editing program. The, I can do, so if I do screen, that is right, it's at the position zero. This works like a list in Python for whoever is a Pythonista. And just have the position here. And so there are quite a few magic around here. So you see, I have a vector, a vector object instance for the position, but I don't have to worry about instantiating that. I can just relocate it by putting it, um, okay, put it at uh, column zero, eight, like this, just a tuple. It automatically it converts to that vector object. It's uh, quite neat software project using Python introspection stuff as well. And if you draw here, it is move it here. And if I had a background ASCII art on this on the screen, it would be untouched. It's just, uh, I can move things around without having to worry about the background. Uh,
And then on uh, so to recapitulate, we have a, a, a few object categories there. We have the shape category, which is like an image, and a shape does hold a sprites container, which can have other shapes. And these can be placed arbitrarily anywhere on, on the first shape, just like layers on an image. And uh, the sprites, they can have that transformer thing. The transformer can uh, can be a Python function that you get any of a number of parameters and convert it. I can I can do leave conversion of. Um, of the color, the character being displayed, background color, uh, so it's like a, a non-destructive drawing thing. You have on this, you have to set up on this API. You can have like, um, so I have the C rights position zero. It's not the same as the DSC. The SH object I had. So it, uh, it's a sprite. It's not the same as these. This contains this. This is the thing where I wrote the LGM text in it. These also have a transformers container. And so this is a bit more complicated, but just you know, to, to show the possibility of it. So I can add a new transformer that have a gradient that you make the change the, the color change. So um, it's quite a nice effect to see in text. When I first made this work and I saw in the terminal, I just okay, well, <laughs> because we usually have just these eight colors in terminal. Few applications they use the full color thing, and um, so I'll make a, a, a gradient from a light blue to a darker blue. Uh, horizontal gradient, and that leads to a transformer. With gradients, it goes like this. As it's a list of pairs, and each pair has a stop location, which goes from zero to one. So zero is the start of the gradient. One is the full length of the gradient. I can even put more than one. And the second component of the pair is a color listed as a triple. Or I can put the color name as well. Just do this, or list the color as a triple. So if I do a gradient from 0 uh, to 1, it's red, but that's not good. Let's put some, some light blue here. So 0 to 4, 0 to 4. One. So from white to light blue. If it made all the parentheses right, this should work. No. Missing parentheses or extra parentheses there. Nothing's right. Uh, should work. Let's try. No, it's definitely missing. Let's check. Let's close it there. This one is missing. Okay. This is a gradient thing. And for whoever code in Python, the nice thing this work with uh, the syntax of uh, uh, it yields a color. And you just put the, the, the point you want the color at in the index here. So at zero, it does have that color. At one, does have that color. And I have intermediate colors as you put it here. And also, internally, it holds integer colors from 0 to 255. But you can pass the colors in floating point if you want when you create them. It's quite smart on that. So any intermediate point you want, you get the value of the color there. And the transformer object then takes this gradient thing and applies it to, to the sprite. So I do sp transformers. add, I think it does have an add. No, it's just a normal Python list. 
almost normal because you can only add the transformer objects there. TM dot. Gradient transformers are not in the main module. Yes. Transformers. Gradient transformer. Okay. And then I pass it my gradient as parameter here. So I guess it should all that it is sweet. Oh, it is there. Um, but maybe it's not clear enough because uh, it's, it's too subtle. I will make it uh, move all the way down to red. So I'll create a create the gradient. Instead of this subtle color, let's just put full blue here. And then after going full blue, Ah, because uh, actually the gradient is, is applied to the full width of the shape, so it's 60 column. So maybe it, it gets that full light blue around here as well. So I put 60 columns. Anyway, go to full blue or almost there. And then another color here. We can pass the color as Thank you to convert it internally for to a Python to a color object. Okay. And I have to pop the transformer. So this works just like a Python list. I don't want to transform it anymore. Just throw it away. And, uh, okay. So this GR is my new gradient. Uh, indeed. So I'm getting the blue here, probably to come, come red here. So this allows one to, to draw a lot of stuff. Now I need to know if we have questions or requests, or we do something. Okay. So pipping close to the image there. Check what it is. Ah. So what is this thing? Yes, so, so there's a pattern there. I, I didn't do the teacher thing yet, but there is space for it. Actually, so if you see if you see the, the project structure, the only subfolder I have in there. I have some flat Python files here with all the logic thing, but for the transformers things, which is the, the coolest part of this one I can really play. So it does have a, a folder. And I intend to fill this up. We have um, so some some convolution transformations here, which can transform single lines into complex ASCII tables. Um, so I showed this one. So my idea is, was I, I didn't come back to stop. Uh, so I. I my idea is to have uh, a way to draw fancy Unicode tables with all the corner characters and stuff by just applying a transformer. So you draw a blocky rectangle around your, your, your subject text. And then you apply a transformer that will make uh, full blocks appear as lines. And I have it working here with a basic, basic ASCII art. But this work. So if you create another shape like here, and yeah, I'm not forty twenty. I draw some rectangle in it inside it. I start at one, one, go to just avoid the corners because um, like Pippin knows, the abyss thing can, can complicate things. The edges, when you do convolutions, it's always a problem. <laughs> so let's just do the 39, 19 is quite good for me. 
this draws a rectangle there uh, in memory. I want to stamp it. I add it to the, my, my image, just like doing rates uh, and shape two. Um, it can be made in, by default. It enters in this block three. I should pass this thing. Position. Let's draw it on the. Um, so if I add a transformer to it, Python, I want the last insert of the image here, just the minus one index. I actually forgot the name of this transformer, but I guess it is readily available there. Otherwise, I have to check the source code. Transformers dot. Um, so we have the kernel transformer there. So let's check. I have a delay, but I think I have the, the table. Source code for the name of it. So this one and the this file should import it. No. Oh, why? Ah. So uh, the example I have is the deleting block here. I guess I have to. I have it in an example, but I don't have it readily available. I have to import the kernel. I have to pass it as the, the kernel here. So I have to import. Let me see if I don't have it. So I uh, made this one night and never cared to, to make it more readily available, but it is in there. Kernel transformer. And I need to pass it. I hope it's imported. Transformers. Simple. I think I have to import this thing. There it is. This line, I add a transformer. So actually, this sounds a bit complicated, but it makes quite a lot of sense when you have the parts on your mind. So uh, I'm just showing the possibilities here, not. Uh, Not pretending anyone would have this on top of their mind when they use it. So okay, pass the transformer the kernel, which I imported there. This so, um, the image is just a block. If I if I pick up the char, it's just a block char. But what I have here in this very code is a Python dictionary where the key is a nine character string, which I write like this. So I have a three by three character block. And I say, okay, when you see this configuration of empty space and one character here, you put the plus character. When you see this configuration of one character here and empty space around, you use the pipe character. 
So these uh, so these things will translate to to pipes plus signs and underline signs. So you can uh, actually nice thing here is that uh, I have the shape still in memory. If I draw a line from here to here and from here to here, it automatically update there. So I have the shape to thing and does have a draw API and I can do line and I can do my line from one column one uh, row ten on to row nineteen and ten and update the thing. It's actually a non-destructive editing that can be transformed, and you can you can pile up transformers as well. Of course, if I just add the gradient transformer I already had here, so I have the SP2 thing, SP2 transforms, and another gradient transformer using the same gradient. I render this. So I have the, the gradient applied over the character transformation. Let me see that. Yeah. So so yes. Uh, I'm accepting pull requests for that. <laughs> because uh, it's ready to work with that. Uh, and I just uh, kept my mind, okay, so next time I sit down to hack, I need to I'll just write the kernel. And actually, there is even a, a, a scripting tool that um, easy the work of creating this file, because this, of course, is a pain, would be a pain to, to type in. But I have a script here in tools. That you generate an empty dictionary for you to, to fill up with your kernel. It, uh, so it comes up with the project. And of course, uh, all useful kernels. There are not only the fancy Unicode square thing, but there are also round corners. The idea is to, to have that those and have them available readily on the transformers namespace, not having to create them like we did here. OK. So maybe we have uh, some 20 minutes. Uh, uh, this thing is open on the project itself. On the very folder we are working, or um, in so like we had the, the, the shape project, you can you can just start doing some something here. It's, it's actually very simple for you to. The idea is to have it working simply, and what's not simple is meant to have uh, shortcuts in the future, so it becomes simple. Thing is, when we start to adding features, have a lot of ideas, and you never have time to implement them all. So, um, for showing an example, I'll show you my to do file here. Basically, any single line in this file could be expanded to uh, uh, an issue or a future request, and it's this size. <laughs> uh, checking here. And there is also a dawn file. Every single line here is a new feature in this thing. Uh, I'm checking here. This is currently the, the one way to, to know what's done there or not. And a lot of it has bugs, of course. So that there are things that are amazing, amazing for whoever already codes in Python, like uh, so I haven't shown here, but. Uh, So if you do the context, so this thing, sorry, DM context color, okay, here, but a string here, there, it's a color, and it does have components, 
I see this at least. Oh, uh, and I, I can, I don't remember, ah, I can change that, yes, so okay. So, ah, again. Oh, okay, now I want this to be, I need to change it. It, the thing for, for whoever knows the language, it does. It's a, some quite fancy things that they do to keep doing. Okay, this is quite nice. To do. And then I'd make some, some small program from scratch just so, so you can see it's not hard to do. I just put this thing to sleep now so I don't have to reset it. Very good at this editor at all. If I start to get uh, myself in trouble in this editor, I'll just switch to the, to the mouse enabled one. <laughs> and I can have um, so much shape. I don't you can use multi line strings like this, so it's designed so you can do like this. You don't have to, to initiate the library or anything. Uh, when you start drawing the screens, so you have have to create a screen. I actually have to call it. It works as a context manager. Right, not like this, like this. And the other time we use the shape constructor, I pass it a size like this. It's work. But if I pass it a multi-line string, it recognizes that thing. have a function name and data name here. Okay. I have a screen object. Well, this works as a list, but uh, if I had a list and I did use the append method, I couldn't pass extra parameters to it. So I had the add where I can pass not only the shape, but um, easy as well. And so with this, and then just let's just check if this works. Uh, it's active. Screen eight. And using the ink thing, I have also a convenient pause function that uh, just wait until some key is punched on the keyboard. Should be a very minimal program to just do the thing. It doesn't need to be there at the corner. Ah. 
So funny thing, because uh, the example does work. Uh, I think I have an unsurprised method of shapes here. So if I have a shape, oh. Okay. So this shape things that there are there are palleted shapes so I can work with indexed mode. Uh, one thing I didn't say actually uh, when I started the project and when I started the project I, I thought okay I present this at LGM one day uh, is that a characteristic of these images is that you don't have a single color per pixel. You uh, you actually have for each pixel you have a background color, a foreground color, a character, and a text effect. There are four different, uh, at least four different uh, attributes for each pixel. And then I complicated myself and the project because I actually have different shapes to be classes to dealing with uh, the presence of one or other of these attributes or not. And when you create a shape like this by passing a multi-line image, uh, it creates another class, not the one we were drawing with which uh, and this other class is as I stopped writing code for them they bit rotted bit rotted a bit but I have this promote thing uh, but I think I have to pass the same size so I think a shape has size okay. so this is not working Then have it work. Ah, I know it. Uh, the, the sprites mechanism just uh, just works with the full shape. The full shape is the one where each pixel has all the four attributes. The shape that's created by multi-line things, uh, multi-line text here, is a palleted shape, which doesn't know about characters. It just uh, each pixel is just set or not set, and it does have a color map. So I have to do shape and pass it another shape. It has the size of the first one. It's a full shape. It, so that have uh, all four characteristics for each pixel, color, background, character, and, and effect. Oh, but I can um, here. Always sheet a little bit and see how it's done in the example. Example shapes does that. Okay. Ah, okay. It's a uh, sorry for it. It's a method on the class of the full shape, like this. It's not, it's not an instance method that transforms one shape to another. You just uh, pass the class, the lesser shape, and it creates the, the higher one. this but it's on a, a sprite so um, just a second yeah. here I have the keyboard
have some constants for the, the key codes. One thing I didn't mention, this is meant to work uh, multi-platform. So I got it basically working on Windows one day uh, in December. If you go to Windows and use a decent terminal program, it will work there. It does use different functions for reading the keyboard and stuff. What keyboard is empty? Do sheet a little bit more. I'll call keyboard like this. Okay. So the key codes are like in here, this K name space. Ah, here it is. Let me need the key codes. Keyboard have to be initialized in the in the with statement. Yeah. So um, this other window is another terminal program. It's called Kitty. It's uh, meant for ASCII art as well, and of course a future partner of the Media Project. I didn't quite take uh, full advantage of it yet. But even on it, I did select a, a, a Braille font that doesn't have the empty dots. It draws okay in Braille, but have a, a, a lot of spacing between characters and the height. So you get this thing, so you don't get a nice nice drawing as well. I was planning this before the workshop started, but it didn't work at all. Okay, let's go back to the code. Let's edit the code. So if we do everything on the keyboard, so it does. Um, let's go into no waiting mode. Don't have to wait for an enter, and then I can use the. And I can add an import for that. Then I can have this position and like this equal oh. better idea. Uh, how can we write this? written a clever way in that example, but we can always go for the old way here. Not sure if this lowercase. So things to check. Sorry. So it is done. no.
Always oh. turn. Ah, I got this lock on. Split from right, left to right, right now. What? Ah, I forgot a while loop, of course. Just check the case press it and go away. The pause did the, 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 the thing, stop here. Like, did drill the thing, but this is not a while loop. I have to do it here. Now it comes uh, my lack of functionality with the VI text editor. I'm not quite sure if, how old I, uh, I think I did this. Yeah, it did work. Oh, sorry. The vector thing is not mutable because then it can be used as a dictionary keys and stuff. Have to change the the whole position attribute. So it should be possible to do. Does work a little bit, but just one one block in each direction. Also, I've been hacking new features without using the existing ones. It makes it hard to remember right now. Um, funny thing, it should. It adds one, but then it doesn't add the second key, the second thing. Uh, ah, here it is. Why? The thing is, must not be in the loop. It recreates the sprite at every every step here. So uh, let's do this. Oh, there it is. And if I had more text here, it would just float over this text here. Oh, okay, things. But maybe that's more. Another 
So that's it. Project is there. Um, I just asked the, the GitHub that, uh, the GitHub repository is like right here. So I'm not sure if the string I'm going to do. So it's GitHub. It's bueno, Termi Media. And just so that it's visible on the low resolution streaming, I just paste it here as well. So this is the URL for the project. Whoever wants to come with ideas and research there is welcome. Thank you for watching. Okay. Okay. <laughs>